Good evening and a very warm welcome to everyone to another extramural lecture by the EML team IIT Madras. We have with us today Mr. Narendra Nayak, who is the President of Federation of Indian Rationalist Associations, an apex body of 65 atheist, rationalist, rationalist and humanist groups in India. Rational thinking is integral to scientific experiments. Over the past years, many unscientific practices have crept into scientific institutions. Particularly in the case of India, when you impose 21st, 21st century technology on people with the 16th century mindsets, pseudoscience is prone to be prevalent. <coughs> Superstitions and dogma have offered hindrances to scientific process. Rationalists and free thinkers have tried to expose many hollow claims made in the realm of science. Through the lecture, Narendra Naik intends to bring some of these claims to the forefront and attempt to bring to the notice the rift between science and pseudoscience. Narendra Naik is a medical biochemist by profession. He has worked for 28 years as a teacher of biochemistry at Kasturba Medical College, Mangalore. He is a national level master resource person for the National Council for Science and Technology Communication under the Ministry of Human Resource Development, Government of India. He was presented an award for outstanding services to humanism at the World Congress of the International Humanist and Ethical Union held at Oslo in August 2011. I would, I would now like to call upon Bharat uh, Extra, part of our extra mural lectures team to welcome Mr. Narendra tonight with a booking. Thin air. And that's what I've done. 
and now I am going to come and distribute all of you the holy ash, which have got miraculous powers. Come on. Well, you want? <laughs> if you apply this, you will have solutions for all your problems. Yeah, take it. Don't have to do it. Don't have problems in life. Oh, I think we are neglecting people on this. then you can make such tablets. Such a tablet can be hidden in the hand and one move the hand without losing the tablet. Here one sees the pill of ash between his fingers. Here it is crushed. The ash pills in his closed left hand. He takes a pill over to his right hand. Goldie Horn sits to the left and follows intently. But it is it a miracle that we are witnessing? Slate of hand camouflaged by a handkerchief. Here one sees the ash fill between his fingers. And here it is crushed. They are totally mentally disarmed. They don't notice his hands. All they concentrate on is getting a glimpse of Sai Baba, their god. As a conjurer, one works to distract the watchers, the public's attention. Sai Baba does not need that at all. Scientists. Now, here, you assume that my hands are empty. Because my hand was held like this. Here there was a ball of ash in between my fingers. And when I rotated my hand, I just folded it and handed it over. And if you wonder how I could give you the other hand, I had a bigger ball in my other hand. <laughs> and it was just here. Because generally when, they move, when there's a movement somewhere, you tend to look at that and don't notice the other one. And here I made you assume that my hand was empty because I held it 
plant downwards. Secondly, your other assumption was that vibhuti is in the form of a powder. And you thought that if it was a powder, it would have fallen down. Right? So these assumptions made you think that my hand was empty. And the other assumption was, if there was a ball of vibhuti in his hand, when he powdered it, you would have seen it. Right? Why did you not see that? That was because my hand was moving. A lot of conjurers, magicians, and so-called godmen rely on this particular principle that the movement at the larger joint hides the movement at the smaller joint. So many times I'm asked, hey, you are just an ordinary man. The Prime Minister of this country has given a certificate to so and so. Now let us see some precious video footage which was taken by Doordarshan. And in 1992, when I think lots of you were not born even, there was only one TV channel in this country. If you say yes, you are agreeing that you are old. So don't say yes. <laughs> okay? And in that channel there was news at 9 o'clock. And they wanted to show on the news at 9 o'clock the greatness of the very same Godman whom you saw giving the booty. So they wanted to show him materializing a gold chain from thin air in the presence of the then Prime Minister of India, Mr. P.V. Narasimha And this footage was not broadcast. It will be pretty obvious why it was not broadcast when you see it here. Next please. They believe that their guru can suspend the law of physics at whim, but skeptics are now questioning the evidence. This video of Sai Baba is now being circulated secretly in India. It appears to show the godman using a stage magician's trick to produce a gold necklace for a distinguished guest. Just before he hands over an award, his fingers seem to be searching for something underneath the wooden box. He then draws back his hand, waves it around, and the necklace appears as if from thin air. The event was witnessed by India's Prime Minister and recorded by the state-controlled Indian Television Network. But after an editor drew attention to the apparent trickery, this footage was not broadcast. <coughs> now, here you saw the Prime Minister of India, the then Chief Minister of Karnataka, the then Home Minister of India, and the next. It was at the inauguration of a Kalyan Mantap in Hyderabad when he did this. And you know, people are just fascinated by the miraculous antiques of their so-called favorite government. But the TV camera is it. It just records what is happening. So here you saw how the gold chain was passed under the memento by his comrades, associates, or co-conspirators or whoever that is. Now, people expect me also to do the same thing. And where is somebody to help me? And where is the momentum? Sorry. Ganesh, are you going to help me? No. He just isn't getting up. Edgy, are you going to help me? No. Deepak? No helpers, no momentum. I have to do it all alone. And both my hands are empty. Five fingers apart. I just take this empty hand and just wave it in the air like this and invert it. And here comes a golden chair. As I say in North India, I have to do it. 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 So, these are all assumptions that my hand is empty. Where was it? Simple. This is what we call as a skin colored plastic thumb. And what is needed here is, as somebody said, and I say, not slate of hand, slate of the time. Hey, Bhattagar, when Atma ka milan kar Atma se, aapko mosh nita hai. Just give up all your worldly longings and concentrate on the ultimate Paramatma. 
then only shall your soul attain salvation. And if I say that, you will be looking at my face and nobody will look at my hands. Because I am talking adhyatma. Well, if you see the people who speak adhyatma, you see how they live, you see how they travel, see how they behave with others, then you will know what is the significance of this adhyatma. Anyway, one of such adhyatmics went to IIT Kanpur. I think it was in 2011, uh, November or so. He called one student on the stage. Nothing. Do you know me? No. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> What's your name? Rohit. Rohit. Ask him that the young man is very good. He is very good. He is very good. He is very <laughs> no takat. To contract the effects of this pollution, to contract the effects of all the milavarka karma which he has eaten, I have got a medicine here. This is excellent. It's cost like a million I just take it. Yeah, show me your hand. Ah, I apply it here. Okay. Now see the instantaneous work of this instantaneous miraculous medicine and see the strength that was coming to his arm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What is missing is him falling at my feet. <laughs> <laughs> and this was done by the double mister who claims that his art of living can cure anything from cancer to disease. <laughs> <laughs> could fascinate the top students and faculty of the top IIT of this country. Of course, sorry, you may say yours is the top one, but I think generally <laughs> Kanpur one is, uh, ex, uh, uh, I think most of the people accept that as the first one, right? Okay. So, how easy, how much is the need for us to think? Just think of it. You know what I did first? You know what I did later? Simple thing. And he sold that small bottle of what he called as Ayurvedic medicine, I think for 200 rupees for that 10 milliliter bottle or something like that. Anyway, he's not fixed or anything, he just shown the audience. <laughs> anyway, politicians live a very uncertain life. Film actors live a very uncertain life. How about bureaucrats? Bureaucrats have got assured pathways for promotion, everything. So you expect them to be a little less insecure, right? How about academicians? We expect courage from them to speak out the truth. But how far are these expectations right? Yeah? Deepak, sequence four, please. Four, and you will see. Next, no, 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 not that, one after that. T.N. Sashan is one of the most powerful men in India. He is chief electoral commissioner and has been tipped as a future president. He is also one of Sai Baba's most conspicuous devotees. I went to Sai Baba last week and he gave me this ring out of nowhere. It's a set of nine gems. There's a ruby in it, there's a pearl in it, there's a sapphire in it. There is an emerald in it. There's a diamond in it. God knows what else, nine stones. And he re realized this for me out of nowhere. And I touch it and I pull it. And people would say, I don't believe this. But it happened to me personally. And I am not uh, a jungly kind of person. I've got a master's degree in physics. I've got a master's degree in administration and economics from Harvard. I find nothing contradictory between that physics. And the fact that I believe that this came out of the blue. Professional scientists do little. Pause for a minute. Pause, that's all. This is what a bureaucrat says. The great middle class hero to I don't think anything is edited. It is just clearly what he said. And this was what he said maybe around 15, more than that, maybe around 20 years back. 
Of course, I got much better footage than that, but I just kept these as examples. Next, we shall see what a scientist has to say about it. Dr. Lakshman Rao, Professor of Civil Engineering, Indian Institute of Science. Yeah, next. Challenge such beliefs. This Sai Baba Shrine in Bangalore, the center of Indian science and technology, attracts professors from national research institutions. Experts in engineering, aeronautics, and geology gather to worship a man they believe has superhuman powers. People can be a little divine, they can be extraordinarily divine. And he is one such incarnation. We consider him divine. There's no question about it. I have been a scientist, I was a non-believer in Sai Baba himself. But today, I'm an absolutely firm believer. I've seen things happen right before my eyes. And uh, the ring I am wearing here, you may perhaps like to. A picture of this. It was materialized. It was created by Sai Baba, just by a wave of his hand. And to prove that there is no uh, hide and seek in this, at one point of time when he produced, he produces a lot of this vibhuti, as you call it, or the ash, the white ash that you see. In uh, Puttaparthi, where I went for the first time to meet him, what he did was, he asked me whether I'm going to use this vibhuti. Then I said yes. Then he gave it to me. He materialized one thing by a small wave of his hands. He circles his hand like this, and these things appear in his hand, and he gives it to me. Just to make me believe, because I'm a scientist skeptical about this, he raised his hand like this, and then rolled up his sleeve, and showed me his armpit. He says, Pe people say, I find these things in my armpit. Do you see that? I said, no, I have no explanation. So, definitely, Sai Baba can transport materials, can materialize anything he wants. There is no doubt about it. Yeah, I also rolled up my sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing much to see there. I know Salman Khan. I just lay my hand like this. And here comes the ring. It's not hidden in the armpit, sorry, it was hidden in between the fingers. So how do you like it? So this is what our academicians have to say about the so-called miracles or so-called God. Once I was in a place called Katak, which is near Bhuvaneshwar, and there I was addressing a group of very, very senior academicians. And a very senior professor told me, you gave me a ring who showed me a chain, gave me some vibhuti, all useless things. Give me an apple. I thought he must be a professor of physics and a great devotee of Newton. That's why he asked for an apple. I said, well, let me try, sir. Well, I don't think I can do it, but I'll try. I said, probably with your best wishes, I'll be able to do it. So I said, pranam to him. Just wave my hand in the air like this, and when I wave my hand in the air like this, I produced a brand new 100 rupee note and told him, why one apple said you can buy two kilograms of apple? <laughs> and he was surprised. You know, these things take a lot of CD, you know, to get these uh, powers to materialize things from thin air. I was working in the Kasurva Medical College, Mangalore, and in 2005 I got this power to produce things from Mumbai. <laughs> and I went into the uh, office of the dean, head of the institution, and told him, hi, I do it. He said, hey. You are an assistant professor, don't lose more to respect the head of your institution. I said, what? I know how to make money, just wave my hand in the air. Like this. <laughs> so he said, no. And you know what he said? He got up from his chair, came to the other side and told me, hey, bye, Narendra. Please teach me also, I also do this <laughs> It's a joke. He is a very good friend of mine. Why I quit my job in 2006 was for a simple reason that in 2004, in a district called as Gulbarga in Karnataka, in a taluk called as Adam, in a village in this taluk, a seven-year-old girl was kidnapped and she was flayed alive, or we don't know, she was flayed by a group of mantras who practice a sort of black magic which is called as Bhagavati. And the villagers knew about it, but they did not have the courage to even protest or rescue that girl for the simple reason that they thought that this group of black magicians have got supernatural powers. When I read about that incident, my blood just boiled. I thought I have no business to be sitting in my lab and doing my work and teaching my students. Well, 
things like this are happening in this country and where we are supposed to have the second largest or the first largest scientific manpower on this planet. And what is this manpower doing when somebody claims to have supernatural powers? And that is the duty which we are forgiving. As the largest scientific manpower on this planet, are we doing anything to reach across to the people? That's a serious question which we have to ask ourselves. And how do you reach across to the people? How do you go to a village and speak to them about claims of the paranormal? There's hardly any point giving a lecture. It will just go from one ear and come out of the other. It will be like our lecture classes, you know. I've been putting two students to sleep for 28 years, so I know very well. And they tell me, sir, your post-lunch lectures are real good, particularly when you have PowerPoint presentation. I said, why? They said, you dim the lights. <laughs> That's so here is a simple example of producing a currency note from thin air. But only thing is you have to take the right currency note. Oh, my first program in England, I took a 20 pound note and I produced it from thin air and it tore. For my next program in England, I took a 100 rupee note from thin air. They asked me, you are coming to England and you are giving us rupee notes. Why? I said, unlike you, we have got very strong currency. <laughs> now, our currency is very strong compared to Euro. I did not cover dollars because I want to to US. But when I went to Europe, I saw that Euro is pretty flimsy. And so is, but Australian ones are pretty good, the dollars. They are made from some plastic reinforcement. Anyway, I just hold it like this. Most important thing is to convince the people that your hands are empty. And just go on like that. And you can miss that by making movements. But acting will normal. By never taking a look here. By being totally relaxed. And you know, compared to those guys, my presentation I think is far better. We will all agree. <laughs> so just wave your hands like this. And when you wave your hands, just open the folds of the note one by one, one by one, one by one, and here there are the note coming from the now somebody told me, what's wrong if a godman gives a ring to his devotee? What's wrong if a godman produces devotee from thin air? Now let me tell you an incident. I, this happened in Mysore University. The wife of one of the professors there, this was an incident which happened about 20 years back, got an abdominal swelling. And she was a great devotee of the Puttaparthika. So she went there. He blessed her and said, Amma, your son is taking Punajanam in your womb. And that lady was 52 years old, well past her menopause, but she believed in this God and kept on applying Vibhuti on her stomach. And it went on growing, growing. And even after 10 months, nothing happened. And then when they showed her to their family physician, he said, What is it you have been doing all these years, all these months? Are you human beings or are you butchers? She was having a huge malignancy of the world. And this was because she believed in that. Say, so somebody asked me, I'll show you that interview later for the Australian TV, there's a program for 20 minutes. He said, are you uh, telling that Santa Claus isn't real? I said, I'm not bothered about Santa Claus because Santa Claus doesn't go around giving medical advice. Now let's see the next clipping, which can show you how dangerous these guys are. Well, I'll tell you what to substitute for his words later. The skeptics are not just worried about the Guru's political influence. They fear they may also be doing medical harm. This one, he dresses in pink silk and offers healing to his patients by playing classical ragas on a Japanese synthesizer. It gives energy and also calm and also heals us. To diagnose cancer, heart disease and AIDS, he uses a collection of crystals which, he says, emit rays of light only visible to his eye. The crystals tell him the disease patients are suffering from. 
He treats them with a touch from his crystals and by having them listen to his music. This crystal shows colors and which row sits, people sitting, they show different colors and vibrating like a small bulb. So then, very easy to recognize oh, how many lights, the blue lights, oh, 12 lights. Today, 12 cancer patients sitting in this hall. <laughs> so then I will announce, in this gathering today, 14 member cancer patients, 12 member heart patients, please stand up. Then Swami is calling and then giving advice, please change your doctor. Or you can go ahead only this medicine, continue this medicine. And you are wrong diagnosis. Please come in near me. Then I will give to something to you. And Swami is recommending this particular raga in this moment. You can listen half an hour. And then Swami is giving some healing stones also. The Swami then surprised the film crew by materializing a trinket from the bottom of his favorite crystal. This part of It's not magic, but it's only token like a chocolate. It's charm. It's an illusion. We magicians, we tricksters, we wizards, we manipulators, we do it many, many times as a part of our business. But if we turn the whole thing and if we take the attire of a, of a god man, pretend to be something great or with divine power, then I become a bubble. <laughs> But we don't want to do it. We are artists. We want to entertain people. But the people who do that, their intention is bad. They, they are pushing the society towards the negative direction. Science is trying to forge ahead and they are putting it towards the back. It should be stopped. Now if you substitute that medical thing by some engineering Say the software you have developed or the building you have designed, you will know how you will feel. A fellow who failed 10 standards says that what a super specialist says, he sits in judgment over that. And mind you, these people are not harmless. One of my friends in Bangalore was building a house. The contractor who was building a house asked for a copy of this. I asked him why. He said, I'll make thousands of copies of this footage and I'll distribute it to all friends of mine. What was the reason? His wife had cancer. That was diagnosed by FNAC, Five Needle Aspiration Cytology. And she was told by the oncologist that for three years we can guarantee you after surgery, after chemo, after radiation. She said, I don't want the advice of you doctors, you are all in the pockets of the multinationals and blah blah blah. I will go to my Swamiji, who will remove the disease from the roots. That is the common thing that you can judge calling. Yes, he succeeded. She went to him, she got the CD, she was playing it for one hour in the morning, one hour in the evening, and within three months, her cancer judge Nikala. Yes. When she dies, naturally the roots of the cancer are gone. And this man said, before you take care of her body for cremation, I am going to cremate this fellow. There were huge cutouts of this fellow in the house. He threw them all on the road, put petrol on that, set fire to it, and then he said, now you can take my wife's body from here. And then he made copies of this and distributed it to people telling them, don't believe this guy, he is a bloody cheat. And this guy, his name is Satya Narayana. He was a daily major in a post office. And he was dismissed when I was saying that in one of my lectures to my students in Mangalore, one boy from Mysore got up and said, do you know sir who got him dismissed? I said, I don't know who is it. He said, my father. Because he has embezzled some money out of money, they complained and they got him dismissed. And he takes up a profession or two professions in this country, you don't need any qualifications. One is to become a politician, other is to become a god. That's all. 
even if you want a post of an attendant in IIT, they will ask, have you passed seven standard? Where is the certificate? Bring that. No, seven standard fail. So no job of attendant. What? But to become a politician, you don't need anything. Similarly, to become a godman, you don't need anything. Learn a few simple stupid tricks. Do them. And you will get certificates from the Prime Minister, President and everybody. And then everybody will start believing you. Yesterday I was traveling by train and in my compartment there was the producer. His name is Jerome. He said he produces movies. He said he made a movie called Singham which made a lot of money. And he told me that in Chennai there is a Ayya who does puja for the camps before they start filming. And for one movie which he did, he got three lakh. No, I mean the movie made fantastic profit. So now he's invited for the every movie, and then he charges three lakhs for puja. So pretty prof profitable profession this is. You don't need investment. Don't need to appear for investors. Don't need to study. Just learn a few tricks. Start doing them. Collect a few people around you who start singing praises of you, and then. All set to become a good man. Anyway, now why do I object to these people? At the age of 12, I was an atheist. What is atheism? It's just a conclusion that there is no supernatural power. It's just a conclusion. Then, as I grew up, I became a rationalist. A rationalist would like to investigate, would like to have some evidence before he believes something. And later on, when I read about humanism, I thought, oh, this is something which I am. Because a humanist says that all people are equal, regardless of the nationality, ethnic origin, language, color, gender, sexual orientation, or any other thing. And each human being has got a right to his or her happiness, provided it doesn't infringe over the human rights of others. So being a humanist, I cannot agree that somebody is superior. And these godmen want to show you that they are superior to you. Just remember that one point agenda is to show you that you are unequal. I am something bigger than you because I can do things which you cannot do. For example, a burning piece of camphor. Can you hold it in your hand? Definitely not. Whenever in Karnataka I speak about burning camphor on the palm, I was saying that in, in the presence of a psychiatrist from National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences. And besides him there was a plastic surgeon, she works there, she's a friend of mine, Dr. Jayarashmi. I asked her, what is it you are doing in that uh, psychiatric hospital? She said, mine is the busiest practice there. I said, what? She said, every second woman who comes to this hospital has her palm burnt. Because? When a woman starts acting funny, the differential diagnosis is only two. That either she is possessed by a spirit or that there is something wrong with her. So, how do you diagnose that? Differential diagnosis. Keep a piece of camphor in the hand and light it. If it burns, then it is mental illness. If it doesn't burn, then spirit possession. Take her to the witch doctor for uh, exercising the spirit. Anyway, I'll show you about that a little later. Now that camphor burning business, let us try. Who is possessed by spirits here? Oh, here is a piece of camphor. Yeah. Now onwards, for everything, we need volunteers, please. Yeah. Yeah, come, come, come. How about equal opportunity? What about one of the girls? Then don't blame me, that you are Just check whether this is done. Then don't tell me that there was some chemical in my hand. You are Just check whether this is done. It is. And this is the matchbox. Well, shall I try? Because you are possessed by spirits. You have done this before. Here is a piece of genuine capital, and here is a person possessed by spirits. So let us see what happens to him. <laughs> Can't even light a match. How will you cook until you get married? <laughs> well, well.
Well, I think I must be possessed by spirit because it's doing well. Well, would you like to try? <laughs> Just time, keeping and removing both things I will do because you are not to lose. Don't close your mouth and just end your breath out. Out, out, yeah, that is it. Don't do anything, just hold your breath when I keep it. When I keep it, hold your breath. depends on the nature of substances. Camphor is a unique substance that it goes directly from solid to vapor. It undergoes sublimation. It's a big thick piece of camphor just took it in one pump and it got warm transferred to the other, got warm for this transfer here. Camphor sublimates and it's got a low flash point so it burns easily. And remember the heat of the flame is at the top not at the bottom. And again, keeping it on the tongue is much easier than holding it on the palm. Because the tongue is wet with the saliva and it takes quite, a, quite some time for the heat to reach the tongue. So you don't need any supernatural powers for this. So this is how some godman would like to show you that he or she is superior to you. Now, I would like some Two unmarried girls to come on this stage. <laughs> Why? I'll let you know. So, this is about a miracle that is performed in the district of where I come, Dakshina Kannada, where you have got something called as Bhuta Kola. You have heard of Coca Cola? <laughs> you heard of Pepsi Cola? But I don't think you have heard of or drunk Bhuta Cola. Because Bhuta Cola is not something to be drunk. But it is a ritual. It is done to propitiate some spirits. And these spirits uh, invoke on the body of the person who is called as a Darshana Patri. He starts dancing and shivering. And then to show that the spirit is inside him, he takes a burning torch and applies it over his body. And nothing happens to him because the spirit protects him. I want Two girls on the stage who are unmarried. Why are you trying to explain? Come first. One more, please, because I want somebody to help me. Yeah, one of the girls can come. One other girl, please, first. Now, here is a mashal, a torch, kandam, they call it. And here is some kerosene. Why ask girls to come on the stage? You'll know soon. Come check on this. What is this? Kerosene. Now tell me the uses of kerosene. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. A spouse, lanterns. Yeah, some people use it to pollute diesel. 
But one important use of kerosene you never say. To burn brides. That's why I call you girls here, so that I can train you how to survive in your mother-in-law's house. That's why I said come on the stage. Do you know why in India you have miracles? I certainly believe that there are miracles in India. You know why? Stows burst only when tea is being prepared in the mother-in-law's house by the daughter. Have you ever read in any newspaper or have you ever heard of an incident where the daughter was preparing tea in her mother's house and the stove burst? No. Have you ever heard of an incident where mother-in-law was preparing tea and the stove burst? No. It invariably happens when the daughter-in-law is preparing tea and that too the stove is full. That too it happens to be a precious stove and it bursts and drenches her from head to foot and it catches fire and they try to save her, but nothing can be done. Right? So I was in Australia, University of Melbourne, a very well-educated audience, and I told them in India they burn rice if they do not bring enough dowry. You know what's dowry? Yeah, she knows the father has already got it ready for <laughs> You know what was the question there? I don't believe it, but they asked me, what's the dowry? <laughs> so a well-educated audience. So I tried to explain to them. I told them they pay you to get married. So they said, who pays? Is it the government? They thought that the government is good. <laughs> I said, no, 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 no. Then they said, who pays? <laughs> oh, explain it. I said, the bride's father pays the bridegroom. And then they said, they said why? <laughs> I said, because he wants him to marry his daughter. And you know what was the reaction? What a dirty country, right? You won't believe the reaction. You know what they said? What a wonderful thing. They said, I have to sell you too. <laughs> because they just couldn't believe that somebody would give a daughter in marriage, the world and would give money. <laughs> now, I know now, dirty looks are big. Huh? You would like to ask me, right? Are you married? In India, how do you see whether a woman is married or not? Look at the neck, there will be some blood. We can so how do you make out whether a man is married or not? You look at the face. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next question will be, how much dowry did you take, right? You know, for a fellow like me, first of all, nobody will give a girl in marriage. And over that, if I ask for dowry, I thought maybe they'd beat me up and throw me. <laughs> so I did not have the courage to ask for it. Anyway, I always ask people, if you can guess properly how much my marriage costs, I'll give you 100 rupees. Somebody said, why not more? I said, I'm not a very rich guy. So if you can guess, I'll give you 100 rupees. <laughs> how much my marriage costs? Start from there. 100. Five. Five. 100 rupees. No, no. 5 rupees. 5 rupees. No. 150, yeah. No. no okay. Zero. Zero. No. What do you think? The register is my father-in-law. <laughs> it cost you your life. Okay, anyway, since the right answer is not coming, it was 25 rupees for which a receipt was given. For 3 rupees, no receipt was given. <laughs> I said, where is the receipt for 3 rupees? He said, I am not supposed to give you a receipt for 3 rupees. I said, why? He opened the Special Marriages Act and showed me three rupees is my visiting fees. I said, okay boss, take it. He said, I can give a kacha receipt if you like. See, this is what we forget. Whenever you go to a government office and whenever you pay something, you should ask for a receipt. And that is anti-corruption. Anti-corruption doesn't come by wearing caps with slogans. Anti-corruption comes by refusing to give bribes. And last year in Sri Lanka, I was here interviewed by some reporter and she got one of my best quotations. I don't know. I said, um, what is your achievement in life? She asked me. I said, two things. One is I have not bribed any man. Second is I have not bribed any government. So, those are my only achievements. You know, it's a difficult decision. When my mother's body was taken for cremation to the corporation crematorium, that man says, give 50 rupees. I said, okay. Give me the receipt. He said, receipt is of 5 rupees. Then I said, well, I am going to pay only 5 rupees. 
And I asked him, why are you asking for 50 rupees? He said, officially, am I allowed to collect only 5 rupees? But since the pay is not enough, I have to collect 50 rupees. I said, the pay is not enough, you quit your job. He said, you didn't give me another job. I said, I did not give you this job, so why should I quit? <laughs> why should I give you another job if you quit? Then there was a big fight and people said, your mother is dead and you are fighting for 5 rupees here. I said, if my mother comes back to life, I don't mind, but I mean, then I will relax my principle. But here I am not going to die. Yeah, that was the thing. Well, sometimes you get into difficult situations, but you have to face up. Right. Ah, now, yes, training you how to survive your mother in house. <laughs> in your networks. And here we have kerosene. Here we have this flame.
child, if they choose to give dowry, I don't know what will happen. Anyway, right. Now, uh, let's go to sequence 11, where we'll uh, show you this. No, no, I think 12, 12. 12. Next, 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 next. Next. Ah, this is the one. Here. Yeah. No, no, next, next, next. Next, next, next. Sorry. Next, next, next.
ये हमारी चमत्कारी शक्ति से चमत्कारी शक्ति तो बाबा बोलेगा अब तो मैं वैज्ञानिकों के पास इसीलिए आई हूँ आप तो बताइए प्रमोद जी कैसे हो रहा है ये क्या कर रहे हैं गर्म जरा भी नहीं लग रहा नहीं नहीं एकदम गर्म नहीं लग रहा है और ऐसे ही लग रहा है जैसे कि तेल एकदम ठंडा हो गया है और इस तेल का स्तंभन किया गया है चमत्कारी शक्तियों से और इसको जो है हमारे कहीं जितने भी लोग यहाँ पे लिए हैं ये सारे लोग कर सकते हैं इसके पीछे जो है जो चमत्कार के पीछे जो विज्ञान है वो हमारे नरेंद्र नायक जी आपको बताएंगे तो ये पूरी हम निकाल के देंगे तो थोड़ा सा करिए इंतजार ये गर्म गर्म पूरी अब इससे निकलने वाली है ये देखिए नायक जी ने बड़े ही प्यार से बहुत अच्छी सी पूरी से की है और बहुत पूरी अच्छे से वो फूल फूल भी गई है तो आप बहुत ही स्वादिष्ट पूरी ये दूसरी बन गई तेल बहुत ज्यादा साफ में जरूर आया है लेकिन पूरिया तली जा रही है दो पूरिया अब इन पूरी के पीछे की सच्चाई क्या है ये तेल गर्म क्यों नहीं लग रहा है One of the question asked to me by I think one of the national Hindi news channels. I was somewhere and they said, "Yahan ek bilkul kala makeup pehen ke khada hai." It was somewhere in Delhi. It was a Shani Mohan and Amavas. So double whammy of superstition. <laughs> Shani Mohan pe Amavas pe. And this fellow was dressed as Shani in dark makeup, and he was keeping oil in a cardboard uh, container and removing puri from that with his bare hands. And they asked me, how did you do it? I said it's very simple. If you are a biochemist, you will understand why it is so. And again, if you know physics also, you will understand why it is so. Now, let me give you some idea. If you take this kadai with oil in it, which is hot, the kadai or the oil. If you touch it by mistake, you will just pull back your hands, and nothing serious will happen. But if a mistake, even a drop of oil falls in your hand, you'll get a big blister. Why is that? That's for the simple reason that it sticks. Your skin is a bilayer, phospholipids, membrane, and this is a lipid, so it sticks. Now, if you already have cold oil sticking to your hands, then it will take a lot of time for the hot oil to stick to your hands. Simple. I just kept a small katori underneath, in which there was the same oil cold. I was dipping my hands into it, which nobody would have noticed. And then I was removing the puris from the oil. And in that short time, the heat doesn't reach your fingers. So a very, very simple, cheap trick, but it appears to be a great miracles event. Every single one of the so-called miracles is a simple, cheap trick. But Because of our faulty logical thinking, it appears to be a miracle. Walking on fire, fire walking, is passed over the miracle in many many places. I think Tamil Nadu is a miracle, a miracle or something. In Karnataka also, coastal Karnataka. And when I went to England, they told me you can earn thousands of pounds. They said how? They said there were mine development courses. At the end of two days, you can walk on fire and your feet will not burn because your mind is developed. Mind over matter. Is it mind over matter? Is it because of some supernatural power, or is it because of physics? There is something called as the Levinson effect. When a liquid comes into contact with a surface whose temperature is well above the boiling point of the liquid, the liquid evaporates rapidly and it forms an insulating layer between the two. For a short while, you may ask me, where is the liquid here? When you walk on fire, the liquid comes from your epithelial cells, and you know there's always a film of moisture on your body. And remember, well above the boiling point. That's why we can do this. Anyway, I'll show you the footage, and you can easily make out. And that was one of my first challenges when I was, I think, around 21 or 22 years old. I used to tell people, "Hey, no supernatural power." Then they laughed. How does psychology work? I would say he does that, that, that keeps it. So do it. How does somebody walk on fire? I said, little cross effect. I learned it from some textbook of physics. So do it. When you see those embers in front of you, little cross effect or no little cross effect, <laughs> you get a bit scared for the first time to walk because the fire is real and little cross effect is there in the books. <laughs> So 
So when you overcome that fear, when you take the first committed step, then only you realize the application of this in a so-called miracle sequence. Well, I will show you the footage of hundreds of people watching on fire. I think it is sequence seven. Oh no, next, 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 next. I oh, next. believe in us. It's near the end of the monsoon period in India. And crossing the lush green landscape in the intense heat and humidity is a small minibus with an ominous cargo on board. It's heading towards an isolated village. One of the men it's carrying has extraordinary powers. He's dressed as a guru or god man, and inevitably the local villagers respectfully bow down at his feet. With his bodyguards at his side, he's about to demonstrate his magical, supernatural powers of healing. But such magic costs money, and these people will have to pay. First, he makes holy ash out of thin air and distributes it to the faithful. Next, he uses his powers to make a banknote from nothing and simply gives it away. Then it's holy water.
It must be holy, because even when the jug is empty, the God-man simply blesses it and makes some more. Such miracles naturally impress everybody, but one man is particularly interested, especially what happens next. A young woman, obviously very distressed, is brought forward to see the God man. Her parents explain that they're desperately hoping that the man who can perform such miracles will be able to heal their daughter. She's apparently possessed by an evil spirit, a term used in these parts to describe what others might regard as a physical or mental illness. Using his supernatural powers, the godman draws the evil spirit out of the woman's body and puts it into a coconut. possessed by the evil spirit, starts to shake and roll. The God-man then moves the evil spirit into another coconut and pours magical water on it. The evil spirit is destroyed by fire. And breaking the coconut reveals blood. Now released from the terrible affliction, the young woman collapses. I think this is not what you think. The whole thing was a drama. The Godman is one of my first students. I've conducted hundreds of training programs to teach people how to do this. Mm -hmm. Woman who is possessed by the spirit is a part of our group. But one thing in that was not acting. That is the reaction of the villagers. The villagers did not know that it was a drama. You could even see the sincerity in their eyes when they prostrated in front of the godmen and their reaction when he was exposed. So that was no acting at all. There was no sense. So, you can understand that this is being exploited in a sense. The conditioning of the mind of people from a very young age, which makes them believe that certain people have supernatural powers, is what conditions them into falling for people like this. And if you see the uh, footage, you will see them paying money. And I know people have spent lakhs of rupees get rid of spirits like this. Anyway, I think I've said enough. There's a lot of things to show, but there's hardly any time. So I think we'll go into the interactive session. I think you must be having a lot of questions. And I think we shall go on to the question and answer session. Because I would like to thank
So uh, when I was a child, I used to do some kind of, you know, uh, it was in Nagar Pradesh. My mom used to give me it and uh, I used to do that. Uh, my father suddenly comes in and, uh, you know, he uh, starts calling her for doing these things. I couldn't really understand what was that at that time. Uh, maybe in my uh, 13th and 14th year, when I was uh, 13, 13, year, 13 years old. Uh, I mean, I, I had a fear factor in me, uh, which was, uh, uh, you know, which was reason for me to follow what my mom has said. So, I mean, even now, uh, when I when I see some of my friends, yeah. how to overcome the fear factor? I got the, I overcome the fear factor at the age of 10 I became an atheist because the God took my birth. Yeah. 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 So I felt uh, there's nothing, yeah. yeah I mean, uh, sometimes I feel that there is something supernatural. I mean, I, when I feel that I have feelings, I, I, uh, you know, I, I realize that there is something supernatural. Yeah. Isn't okay. It? okay, okay, very good. Now, shall I say something? Sure. If you really can demonstrate the supernatural, you will get one million dollars. My friend James Randy has given a challenge, he has given me the checks also and he has said wherever you go announce because my property is not much maybe around a crore magazine but James Randi has got 1 million US dollars he said Narendra wherever you go tell people just come and sit across the table and demonstrate the supernatural power and they can take the money so please go ahead you can earn foreign exchange dollars we may not be able to demonstrate okay. then let's leave it as that it's an apprehension in your mind. My question is more of a political and uh, organizational nature. Right. I'm just wondering uh, what's the relation between uh, affiliation of uh, Indian Rationalist Association and uh, Anishrita Nirmala Samiti in Maharashtra? Yeah, they are all members. Yeah, and the second uh, question is, uh, in uh, I didn't follow it up, but uh, when I was in 10th, uh, there was this uh, talk going on uh, in Maharashtra assembly about uh, bringing about the uh, Maharashtra uh, government uh, act. And that was passed in the assembly, but it was held up in the legislative council. That black magic and uh, witchcraft. But it was a very nice bill, and we are asking for it at all India. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was asking. But anything like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are, we are, we are proposed it to the central government, and I think we have got good response. Let us see what. Happens. But naturally, there will be opposition to it from and all the like, uh, from black magic. Um, whether like you have any plans or like can uh, normal people who can't do much like can they support it through uh, one minute, one minute, one minute. You said normal people. <laughs> 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 okay, I mean. Uh, yeah, okay. No, people, I'm just like, okay. students as uh, yeah, etc. Sure. Is there some online campaign or something like that yeah, is going on? Who pressure the government? No, let's have an online campaign. But first of all, let's let's see what we can do. See, if you, like you said, the activities of the Sutta in Ulam Sami, it's a member of Hila. So, what we would like to do is, first of all, they gather strength, make people think. And how do you make people think? The best way to do is by demonstrating it in US. So, that is what we are doing. Going to the people, we are using the same techniques that the government will do something dramatic, then explain it then say extrapolate it to all the supernatural phenomena which you see. So that way we, we are running this campaign. We are training people all over the country. And we can have a training program here also. We had one in IIT come to a three day training program. Wherein uh, doing things is not very is a bit difficult because you have to have the training. It looks fine when I take camphor in my hand and do all the put it on my back. But for you to do it, you will need training. And there are hundreds of these items. And I cannot show all of them here because the time is very limited. So, what we would like to do is say, have a group of 30 to 50 people, spend two or three days with them, train them to do these things. And it can have a cascade effect. You go to the villages, do it. You train more people to do it, and you're all very intelligent people. So, you can learn things very fast. And I'm sure you can do far better than me because you are younger, you will uh, have more dexterity in your hands, 
and more courage in your minds. And I am sure that you will definitely do better than me. And that's what I am looking at. This is just an introductory session to draw people to this. And mind you, this is there in the Indian Constitution, Article 51 AH. Define the duties of a citizen. Say that it is the duty of every citizen to create scientific temper, the spirit of inquiry and humanism. So we are, I'm just fulfilling my constitutional duty as a citizen by doing it. Next question, please. Yeah. Um, you said about Satya Sai Baba earlier, yeah. and I'm not a fan of something of you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he has done like uh, lots of uh, developments. He has built some hospitals, colleges, etc., uh, etc. Et so like the most part of money comes from the rich. Like uh, we are lots of politicians. So a Robin Hood image. Yeah, it's a Robin Hood. <laughs> so what like he is doing something good for uh, poor by exploiting from the rich. So it's okay. Okay. So you mean to say the ends justify the means? Fine. In that case, there have been a lot of people who are proposed who are praising a guy called Telling uh, on the stamp paper scam. His villagers hold him in high esteem. Whenever there was a marriage in his village, he would give a minimum of one. So they're saying Telling is God. And what did you go? From printed a few papers. But if you say that to the parents or the four people who were murdered in his ashram, see the reply that we get. And was IIT Chennai built by his friends? Was the India all India Institute of Medical Sciences built by this one? How many hospital beds are there in this country and how many beds are there in the hospital built by him? And when he died, the biometric locks in his bedroom were opened. And what did they find there? Golden thrones. Golden chapels, golden crown. Why was that not used for the poor people of this country here, as you are saying? I don't understand. And why should the rich people give him money? Because of his miracles? Or is it any other reason? And let me come back to this. The largest individual donors in this world of individual wealth, Warren Buffett, Bill Gates and I think Dale Carnegie and one more out of that only Henry Ford is a believer in the supernatural power. All the others are atheists. So don't think that in the name of religion, in the name of spiritual powers, people are doing charity. Even if they are doing, it is only to attract more people into their sport. If you take any help from Warren Buffett, he doesn't ask you to shout, no God, no God, no God, people to take it. But if you are taking his help, you will have to put huge cutouts and to do Sai Bhajans every day. Anyway, it's just a, not a rationalization of each IP, but it's just an explanation. So, I think the basic argument is also kind of flawed, right? I and mean, you can't justify that uh, rich people are supposed to give to poor people. It's their choice. It's their hard work. It's their... Uh... But, but when it comes to... Uh, tax, uh, money, black money hidden from the tax authorities, that's a good place to give because that's absolutely <laughs> no And you know, uh, uh, Vijay Malia, he gave some cases of gold to Tirupati, but his workers are not paid from, I think, past eight years. <laughs> Sir, uh, the Tamil Nadu government uh, runs two retail outlets statewide. One is the ration shops and other one is the Pasmac uh, liquor shops. Okay? And in the ration shops, even if you buy you know, one kg of rice for one rupee, they give you a bill. But on the case of the Pasmac shops, no, not a single bill is given and for every bottle you buy from there, there is a maximum retail price. And it's always 10 rupees more than the maximum retail price which you have to buy. Now, the city commissioner of Chennai knows about this. The judicial high court judge, chief justice of Madras high court knows about this. And our all the executives, including the chief minister of Tamil Nadu, knows about this. But why are we not giving a bill to the Tasmak people? And 80% of the people who go there are daily wage earners who buy these bottles. So, what is the solution we should go ahead? The solution is... And the, the press... The media, this TV channels, all of them they know about this. 
I think it needs a people's education for it. Because in Karnataka you get the <laughs> In Karnataka, the wholesale liquor merchant association have put up a board that we shall not sell for anything more than MRP and they give you a deal. So I think something like that should happen here. Will be will be that, but I think there's a cut right up to the top. What are the 10 rupees? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's why it's going on. But probably and, and last year the total sales was about 15,000 and not gross. Yeah. And this year it is estimated to be 25,000 gross. Yeah. You are drawing me into another uh, field where I have done a lot of work that is the consumer movement. I think today is a restricted case. Right. Well, I'm, I, I'm only pinpointing the... Yeah, it is, it is a consumer yes. issue. Yes. I'm very delighted. Yes. It is a consumer issue. Yeah. And I was again on the committee which drafted the consumer. No, I'm talking about the organized corruption. Yeah, yeah. The organized, the well-organized corruption. Good evening, sir. Yeah. Said that uh, as far as we know that there is no superpower. But if you go back to the ancient uh, Indians, uh, before the technology comes, how did we know there are nine, nine planets and how did they know that dates uh, of uh, solar eclipse? And other gifts, and uh, how did they know the full moon and the low moon? Yeah. Very nice. Uh, you are confusing between the two things. What's astronomy and what is astrology? And among those nine planets, you have got sun, you have got moon, you have got Rahu, you have got Jupiter. Yeah. 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 Anyway, now one important thing for all of you. Please. Listen to me, everybody. Please do exactly as I say now. Okay? Please, everybody. Please stretch out your right hands. Come on. Everybody, please do exactly as I say. Stretch out your right hands. Close your thumb. Close the fingers. And with this finger, touch your chin. Keep your hands, nobody move. I said with this finger touch your chin. How many are sir? Everybody kept this hand. This is how you confuse between astronomy and astrology. Come on, shut and fall your hands. And let me tell you, come back to astrology, which you are confusing with astronomy. If astrology was scientific, I would have been a pauper. Because I give challenge to astrologers. I give you 10 date, time, place of birth. Tell me who is dead, who is alive, who is male, who is female. If 18 answers out of 50 are correct, I will give you all my problems. This is a challenge to astrology. And what are the chances of that? Please tell me you are all very good at mathematics. Somebody took that challenge two years back. One man called us Bhaskar Shetty in Bangalore. He said, I'm taking the challenge. I said, good. We fixed the date. Then he said, my son's marriage is there. <laughs> and of course, I think as an astrologer, he would have fixed the date for the son's marriage. <laughs> then afterwards, it's not to be heard of. What was the reason? It's very clear. Because initially he has thought that the chances are 50-50. Of getting 18 answers out of 20 correct, you would have thought that the chances are 50-50. Male or female, dead or alive. But if you calculate, what are the chances of guessing it? Please? One by two to the power of 18. Yeah. So when he came to know all that, he came. Anyway, I had such a one program in Karnataka uh, for the science teachers from all over Karnataka. One man came and told me, I do astral travel. I said, what? Astral travel? Are you sitting on some donkey or something? Astral travel. <laughs> he said, no, 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 no. My soul comes out to my body. And yesterday I went to Pluto. <laughs> yesterday, yesterday I went to the moon. I said, very good. That reminds me of a Sardati joke. Because, uh, the Americans said, you have gone to the moon. Radhati said, what? You will go to the sun. You are going to the moon. We will go straight to the sun. Then the American told him, how will you go in that point? He said, you are not going to go in that point. 
Sorry, don't take it bad. No, so that is what is was told. But the Sadhajis are not all like irritation people. So don't mistake. Because in Karnataka you have got what are called as the Gauda jokes. Because those jokes are made by the coastal people who think that they are very, very intelligent. All people think that they are intelligent. Our coastal Karnataka people think that they are super intelligent. That is the whole problem. That's why we have the maximum number of scams. When you think that don't think it is easy to cheat me, huh? You are the one who will get cheated here. Yeah. So, uh, similar to this, there is also another pseudoscience which is propagated even by the government, which is homeopathy, which has lots of clinics and to the point which even mainstream doctors advise homeopathy when some of their treatments don't work. So, even th the point which actually irks me the most is that there is an advertisement by the government of India. They actually have a department of homeopathy, yeah, I wish, I wish. which showed that homeopathy, you know, that give their child a homeopathic drug and they will be cured of all their diseases. So how do you deal with this? To the point that it's even well educated people... I have started the process. I went to a positive homeopathy clinic uh, three weeks back. I have given them the first notice. Now I am waiting to file a consumer case on them. Because they promised me that they will cure me of my diabetes which I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was this girl who came with me. She had uh, she is hypothyroid. For both of us, they said the same fees, eleven thousand rupees per year. I was wondering why it is. Then I understood because they are giving us the same sugar. <laughs> and that uh, depending mainly on the placebo effect. So two two things in homeopathy. One is similar similibus correct out, like use like. And the second is dilution increases potency. And I'm open about it, no problem. If any homeopath wants to sue me, they are welcome. Because Samuel Hanman, he discovered he took some synchrona by mistake and he got a fever. And he said, Oh, synchrona was used as treatment for any fever. He said, If you take that for fever and it cures fever, you took it when there was no fever. And you got food. So that means what causes the symptoms of the disease in the body is the cure for the disease. So he says like cures like. And of course somebody told me, what about the vaccines? Now about that we can talk a lot. Then what about dilution? Dilution increases potency because water molecules retain memory. Then you have the most potent homeopathic medicine just next door. Go to the beach, take the water from there. Because the maximum dilution is there, and then you can use that as treatment for them. I was in Patiala three months back. There one man told me an incident. His neighbor, one lady, had gone to a homeopathic man. She had taken a month's supply of medicine and kept them on the table and she went to take part. And when she came back, the medicine had disappeared. And as the baby was sitting there, licking its teeth, a child. So she got scared. Took the baby and ran to the homeopath and asked him, My child has all the money to buy food. What will happen? He says, "Nothing." It has no side effect. I said, "There is no side effect. How can you say that?" So, there is no side effect. So, and again, whenever you see any clinic, Ayush ads at the bottom, you will see if these symptoms persist, please see your doctor. You will see that. If these symptoms persist, please see your doctor. You will see that. Wherever they talked about uh, the swine flu or the avian flu. In fact, I had discovered a medicine for uh, swine flu and I was marketing it. It was just uh, what you call as kadle muta in uh, <laughs> Tamil. That uh, peanuts with sugar coating outside. There were different color ones. I said take five of the white ones in the morning and one pink one in the evening and 99.9% you will not get swine flu. Because it's like any other flu, simple. So similarly, you have got the placebo effect which is, which works. And you have got chronic self-limiting diseases, it may work. Because it's your body which is healing and not that. Anyway. Now there are three types of system of medicine. The first one is the recognized and evidence-based. What you call as allopathy. The second are the recognized but not evidence-based. That is Ayush. 
आयुर्वेदा यूनानी सिद्धा होम्योपैथी योग थर्ड वन आर इन आइडल रेकग्नाइज नॉट द एविडेंस बेस्ड वन दे आर ऑल दिस म्यूजिक थेरेपी एरोमा थेरेपी ब्लाड 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 यू वांट बी दिस टू एंड यू मे से हाउ आर यू बोल्डली सेइंग ऑल दिस आई एम नॉट सेइंग इन द सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑफ इंडिया दिस सेड दैट इन 2004 इन 1999 वन जेंटलमैन फ्रॉम दिल्ली फाइल्ड अ पब्लिक इंटरेस्ट लिटिगेशन आस्किंग द सुप्रीम कोर्ट Please tell us who is a doctor and who can give medicine. Then Supreme Court delivered a judgment about this. He said, though Ayush, there is no evidence. It is generally accepted by people, and there is a large body of literature, so they can continue to be recognized. But the third one, they said, neither recognized nor evidence. Institute of Nutritional Therapy. What do you like? Put the board outside the canteen <laughs> because if you don't take food, you will die. <laughs> so it is the Institute of Nutritional Therapy, Music Therapy. You would have seen that guy, Ganapati, so that Satyanarayan, Ganapati Satchidananda Swami. You listen to this music, crystal therapy, gem therapy. He combines two, three categories together. So this is the sad state of affairs in this country. And by the way, the British, I think, removed homeopathy from their public health service last year. They said we don't want to pay such huge amounts for sugar. It's the most expensive way of selling sugar. Somebody calculated and they said a kilogram of sugar costs around twenty-two thousand rupees or something. When it is sold as homeopathy. Next question. Uh, do you face any problem when you go to the remote areas from the political parties and others? Because our presentation, and uh, let me uh, just play what I have to say. That discovery channel sequence is there. Just come to the last of that. That are the same sequence. Yes. Same sequence. Yeah. Come to the last of that. Last, last. Many who witness these extraordinary demonstrations believe that it's only possible because the gods have intervened to protect the fragile human bodies. But it's no miracle. This amazing physical feat is possible because our bodies are much stronger than many of us realize. The skin on the back is particularly thick and is very tough and durable. There are slightly fewer nerves here, and the intense excitement of the occasion raises adrenaline levels in the blood. This reduces both bleeding and the awareness of pain. Although it might all seem a little grotesque, the idea is to convince the students that you don't have to be a godman or need a miracle to do this. Likewise, anybody can walk on broken glass, just like a godman, as long as you don't let your feet slip. And they learn that walking on nails is easy as long as there are lots of them packed closely together. Should you want to stand on sword blades? No problem, as long as you don't slide your feet around. In exposing all this trickery, they could be accused of destroying people's religious beliefs. But Narendra has no objections to religion itself. What I'm objecting to is primarily exploitation in the name of religion and in the name of religious beliefs and spreading superstitions among the people. The men who do this receive no special. So this is our statement. Whenever this, I said, I have no objection. But when your religion exploits, and if you think carefully, if you remove these two elements of religion, it is only the few uh, cultural elements that will be there. There are no objections to that. And in villages, people are very much convinced about this. They are very, very happy that somebody has come to tell them this. I have audiences of thousands and thousands of people who are sitting and listening. 
वेरी वेरी पेशेंटली फॉर आवर्स टुगेदर सर बताइए सर बताइए या कोई आता ही इवन इन विलेज तो तमिल लड़ो सोचो क्या सर दे विल टेल यू आगे पार्ट और में देन दे आस्क सम क्वेश्चंस आल्सो बिकॉज़ दिस एस्पेक्ट हैज नॉट बीन पुट अक्रॉस टू द पीपल एट एनी टाइम या नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन there was this recent incident of some lad had a work right with uh, some things to be bomb by charge yeah. and he is most uh, living exile in thing like so it's not always so they can see let me come back to the sana lad of work please we have also faced that i been threatened with that when i said cows urine and dogs urine are the same you are not an animal secreted at the glomerulus concentrated in the tubules is created through the blood when i made the statement they threatened me with 295a nothing happened and the same thing was threatened to one of my students i mean not my college student but who had taken the train in fact they bribed the police or i don't know they fixed the police in kodagu they filed an fir they wanted to arrest him he went to the high court got it stayed and after 3 years the judgment came one increment was withheld for the sub inspector the sp was reprimanded and the home secretary of karnataka had to go to the court and apologize because the court said that somebody is spreading scientific temper among the people and you are trying to instead of helping him or obstructing him by filing false cases that's what the court said and here in sanal's case he should have stayed here and fought it that's what i told him but he did Anyway, there are various types of activists. Some activists are on the media, and some activists are on the ground. I am one of those activists who is on the ground, and I always go around, speak to the people. And though threats have been made, nothing much has materialized out of it. Even the management of the college was very unhappy with me, but there was nothing they could do about it. Of course, they tried their best, but nothing happened. so they have to wait for me to retire or quit i would like them by quitting early anyway next question sir yeah sir i uh, understand that these all are okay, what you have told uh, and i believe that before also and before coming i saw some video also the point is that uh, i just want your comment on one particular thing that i i am saying that uh, i have heard and i have read at many places that Say in Himalayas there are yogis which do that actually. They are all fake, but they do it actually. And I read some books also, and one of them happened to be an autobiography. Yeah, yeah, I know. So uh, your comment on that? No, 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 no. Where is the autobiography? 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 Actually, they don't come out for money. Yeah. They do some yoga and all, and they actually achieve it. According to yeah. people whom I have heard, I have heard they claim the books autobiographies means they are supposed to be real. They claim. I am definitely not talking about those who are just fake. So, like one one incident, if we have time, I can share that uh, a person comes out. Yeah. I will tell you. Uh, I also read in books. That there's a man who wears a mask, he swings webs, and hangs out from building to building. Actually, yeah, autobiography. No, no. Just a lay autobiography. Of people who are already dead, so that you don't have the time to ask them. He showed it. See, that is why the autobiography that I'm talking about, that person is. Alright, so be you can question and be in my touch. I can understand. Yeah, yeah. What was the exact? Oh. Means there are many many incidents. He goes to one incident. One incident. The most dramatic one. <laughs> the one that comes to my mind first. Yeah. There yeah. may be more. I am not remembering. Like one one yogi or whatever. The a practice one who practices something, some yoga or something. He comes out and before that he had challenged many doctors that uh, something that means uh, yoga and all or bhakti or something like that. And what he did that. He lied down, and six doctors or seven doctors, who whoever were there, they checked him, yeah, and for half an hour he was dead or something. Pulse like and that. heartbeat stop, right? Yeah, pulse, heartbeat stop. I also stopped. can do it. I also okay. can do it. I have also done it in many places, stopping a pulse and heartbeat. I can do it. No problem. Okay.
I, you know, when I did it for uh, Discovery Channel, there were two doctors, MRCP, uh, that come from England, twins. They checked my heartbeat with the best stethoscope available in BD. And they said, oh, that is really, you are showing yogic powers. <laughs> <laughs> See, the blood supply to the armies through one artery called as the brachial artery. You occlude that artery, your pulse will stop. I stop. Then how do you stop the heartbeat? You know, the heartbeat is the perception of the left ventricle when it's like the anterior side. Just take a deep breath. Heartbeat cannot be perceived by the stethoscope. But if you put an ECG, you can easily find it. So you should stop that when in my presence. I'll be happy. Can't make claims like this because those two MRCP doctors they said great, fantastic. They said, maybe remove my shirt also. I remove my shirt, no problem. <laughs> so it's not a very difficult. Yeah, please. Sir, a person from Maharishi Yoga Foundation, he came to IIT campus here and he is teaching yoga here. And he said there is a person, his senior person, who has been tested by IGCAR, that is the Gandhi Center for Atomic Research. And this particular person can control his uh, heartbeat and BP. He yeah. can control through yeah. his your Not stop it. <coughs> Not stop it. Control. He can reduce it. He can increase yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Because it is subject to vagal stimulation also. Not stimulation. It's just like no, no, no. mental, mental. No, mental. No, no. See, the central nervous system, vagal yeah. stimulation can decrease the heart. Up to a particular level, then you have what is called as a ventricular escape phenomenon, and the ventricles will keep it. You can't go below that. Yeah, but what I'm telling is, he did everything in front of the IG car size. It's possible. And not stopping it. Not stopping it. And she increases that's it and decreases that's okay. it. That's okay. That's mind control. Yeah, that's okay. Because through the higher center also, see when you see a girl, of course, not at mine. If you see a girl, they have to be faster. That's all the same color of the system. Or other way around also, so don't be disappointed. It can happen the other way around also. Yeah. Sir, uh, a slightly meta question. Uh, okay, uh, so homeopathy, it does two things. 90% of it is nonsense, and then they have some real things. Uh, probably it is not in the scope of homeopathy, but homeopathy doctors do spread it. Uh, for example, for easing, a lot of people claim that, okay, more than 50%, not just like Sean, they claim that for easing it helps. So as a rationalist, if a friend of mine tells me that he is going for wheezing after homeopathy, do I say, okay, anyway, wheezing spell is okay, so let him go there? Or do I say, oh, he is going to escalate this to something more no, like this? I am telling you, just get his homeopathy concoction tested. 99% you will find that he has got a low dose of glucocorticoid in there. Because we did that. They had other things also. I tell you that it is pure homeopathic medicine. Many of the Ayurvedic fellows also do that for their asthma cubes. I've seen them. I've tested it in the So now you've got better techniques like HPLC, you can easily find out what it is. And they say they're plant steroids, they are not. So with the advent of glucose corticoids, you can add some beta methadone, dexamethasone, and give relief from asthma. Our people can do it even better. But in the long run, you know the complications of giving glucocorticoids in high doses. So, Good evening, sir. Uh, uh, human can't do supernatural things. Does that imply there is no supernatural power for the whole universe? Uh, as the whole universe is a miracle, isn't there a super power for it? That is an assumption that there is a super power for it. Can be true or false? I don't know. You have made an assumption. Well, I think I can say I don't know. Simple. See, uh, you said we can't uh, take a uh, I mean, that, that, it's like um, if I'm doing something and making his life, taking out his life, that's not possible. But we see people dying. That means the life goes somewhere. That means, isn't there a super power for the whole universe? The same thing should apply to chicken, the same thing should apply to viruses, the same thing should apply to bacteria, fungi, everything. So where does that life go is the question. Is there something other than in the physical means, you need to say. I don't think all life exists within the physical parameters. That's all. 
and when you make an extraordinary claim, it's for you to prove it. If I say I've got 10 heads on this side, 10 heads on that side, which you cannot see, which you cannot feel, you cannot hear, but they are there, well, I have to prove it that they exist. So, since we don't know much about it, we can say, you know, see, people say, what is your objection to? I said, absolutely no objection. But what I object to are the agents of God. That is what we make them realize they harm. That's what we do. Like, where it is not done. Right, right. If your religion says that certain people are untouchable, that is harm done by your religion. If your religion says that men and women are not equal, that is harm done by your religion. But if you say, put nice pongal on uh, uh, pongal day and eat, fine, good.
saying that how Narayana can be punished under section 295A, this much fine, this much imprisonment, blah, 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 blah. Then he came to the last but one paragraph, he said, but however, Narayana is a Hindu, and Hinduism has been continuously reformed by people like him who have criticized the practices, so nothing can be done. That's what he said. I now claim that I was a Hindu, but that's what he claimed. But probably he would not have stood because what I said was the truth. But he said, if a Muslim or a Christian had written it, section 295A would have been applied. So that is very Creating conflict between two religions. But if it comes to an intra-religious conflict, probably it will not happen. If Sarah Ledamarku was a Catholic, probably it wouldn't apply. I would not know. But I'm telling you the legal niceties or illegal hair splitting that may be associated with it. And last two years back, I had exposed the miracle of Mary's flex springs shedding tears. And then again, they had threatened me with this, but nothing more about Because they themselves had permitted me to accept it. So that sword continuously hangs over your head. But I am not taking section 295. Section 295 deals with causing damage. I would agree with it. I don't agree with uh, that any god exists in a temple. But certainly I will agree that when a temple is damaged, it is property being damaged. No, that should not be. Whether it's a temple or a church or a mosque or any other place of worship. Though I cannot go there, I don't agree with anybody harming that because it is somebody's property. So I'm not against section 295. But I have section against section 295A that is offending religious sensibilities. Yeah.
So there are a lot of questions that must be asked. And you may get the answer, you may not get the answer. There is a cultural element to religion, to which I said I have no objection. If you are giving me nice cake on Christmas, I eat it. If you are giving me biryani on Ramadan, I eat it. I have no objection. <laughs> My parents are hardcore believers of this astrology. So they are giving some proofs like, uh, without even knowing the uh, person uh, directly, he told that his son is, will be handicapped also. But it happened to be, uh, his son became handicapped. No. So, In Hindi there is a saying, Maro Patra, yeah, yeah, yeah. Patra, Mila Patra. Like, uh, they are proving, like, providing some two or three proofs like that, convincing proofs. And how will we uh, deal with it? Yeah. For that, there is a very nice way, tell them that kitna they can pay, some 500 rupees. No? You can take all the Randy's property, Randy has got a million dollars, I got maybe around a crore of property. You can take that. Why tell handicapped and all? Say whether dead or alive, male or female. Two most important things for everybody in this world. They say that. And by the way, you can go to the net and check Nirmukta. There are quite a lot of investigations that are done. Particularly the very famous Nadi Jyotida of Tamil Nadu that I've investigated thoroughly two times. Thank so, you, sir. Yeah. Unfortunately, we are running out of time, but those who are interested can take their questions offline. As a token of our appreciation, I would like to call upon Prof. Professor L.S. LS Ganesh, Dean of Students Welfare, IIT Madras, to present a moment of Mr. Narayan Mai. Does it make it good? Or, no, no. Does, do German shepherds have placebo effect? No. 
But I do not know what German shepherds are cured of also. That is also no, being very big. Because, because there is nothing for That's being really no, big. No, 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 no. One more question, no, sir, no. to you. Wait, please, let me ask. Okay, sure. If you ask any homeopath, homeopath will say, homeopath is only for human beings. Wrong. Sir, wrong. 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 Very wrong. Very wrong. Factually wrong. Factually wrong. Sorry. If it is scientific or not, doesn't matter. If it works, that works. That's all. Now, now. Now, <laughs> now, 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 let's not get into arguments. No, no, I don't want Please. to argue here. No, no, I just no, want, no, sir, no. by the way, I respect a lot of what you said. I accept what, a lot of what you said. Please. I'm only wanting to close this Please. by saying, Please, Please understand that there are things far beyond what human consciousness can ever capture. Please don't say human consciousness can capture every conceivable universal experience. I'm sorry. That's, that's absolutely clear. It is it's what I call the arrogance of human consciousness. But, but, wait, wait a minute. If you want to go into discussions, now, the very fact that your uh, German shepherds were cured, that also arrogance of human consciousness, because you gave them homeopathy medicine, which is made by human beings, right? So let's not get into argument. You have your then arapati is also arrogance of human consciousness. Yeah, sure. By the same yeah, argument. Yeah, same Beautiful. Argument. Then aren't we getting into trivial territory? Yeah, yeah. Aren't we getting but, absolutely but, trivial? But, but one thing is, for what you call as allopathy, there is experimental evidence. Absence there, of there evidence. Are, evidence is. is please understand, sir. Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Oh. I please. Think many, many, many. I think they got right. I mean, the entire yeah. legal system works on that. Yeah. Absence of that, evidence that is, is not evidence no, of absence. That is only for no, criminal case. That you don't need evidence at all. No, no, I'm not saying we don't need evidence. I'm only saying you cannot conclude that because there is no evidence, something needs. So if you believe something even without evidence, then why do you need evidence? I'm not saying belief. Please understand. I'm not. Don't put words into my mouth. Now. Please, I am only saying that. Please understand the statement. Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Full stop. Neither can God be proved, nor can he be disproved. It's a personal belief system. Okay. Wait, wait. No, no, one second, one second, one second. One second, one second. We can definitely argue about this. I am only trying to point out, I am only trying to point out, reason or rationalism has certain limitations. That is all I am trying to point out. You must explain then how did the dog homeopathy work on the top. One second, two. Second, my daughter, first daughter, when she was two months old in Delhi, she had a serious problem. Her body was completely blue. Okay? And I was advised to go to a homeopath because at that time I was following homeopathy. By the way, I am not propagating homeopathy. I am telling you it has worked in my family. I hope I am very clear. I am not saying you should go to the homeopathy. I am saying it has worked in my family. My daughter, two month old baby, are you telling placebo works in a two month old baby? What are we talking? What are we talking? Placebo in a two month old baby? Come on. Are you ready to commit that there is absence of evidence? There is no absence of evidence in the case of homeopathy right now. Pardon? Are you ready to accept, commit to the fact that there is there have been no tests that have been conducted for the validity? I have not studied homeopathy so much, sir. So I, I am only telling I you, I have followed, so please understand, I am saying, I, my, I and my family have followed our yeah. homeopathy, it's working, yeah. stop. So, so for my case, it was exactly the opposite of yours. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, my daughter it's fine. and me, now one second, one second. Let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. Let me finish. My daughter was having a child in the history of six months, one year, two months, two years. And then she was like, please, you know, you do get it. Finally, I had to do a drug surgery. That's how it got done. Absolutely. I know homeopathy has failed. I know allopathy has failed. I know everybody has failed. That is not the point of me. I just want us to understand that there are certain things that work for certain people in a certain way. I'll give you another personal experience, sir, which is beyond. Sir, sorry, sir, sorry, sir. The, the experiments here are not scientifically rigorous. Sir, we don't. All I please understand the point I'm making. Sir, the point is there are things. Let me. Can I finish this one?
There are things which are far beyond human reasoning and rationalism. I'll give you a personal experience. I was in Hyderabad. Okay? This time I'm talking about a few years ago. And this I've shared with many friends. I was in Hyderabad. And in the night, no sure. Pardon sir? No, no, sure. No. There is a point which has been made. Okay, Deepak, in the larger interest, I'll shut up. We'll talk outside. Sure, sure. I will talk outside. Yeah. Sir, after joining IT Congress, I can take your questions offline. Sorry, time, sir. Just one sir. line. No, sir. Just one line. Sir, after joining IT Congress, I had fever five times. I didn't take any medicine. I got cured. That's right. Natural cure. That doesn't mean that. That doesn't mean much at all. Please be very clear. I was very clear when I answered him. I am not using inductive logic. I am not generalizing from the particular. Please be very clear. I am saying it has worked in my context full stop. That is all. Okay. Please, 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 please take a discussion. Sir, we will, we will talk outside. I will come and I will we'll have a good discussion. Okay? We will completely discuss. I want to run away.